higher one in this context you will have an idea why we use dynamic cast in c++ with object oriented feature of c++ we can create inheritance relation between objects and classes hierarchically this powerful feature sometimes need more caution to check failure cases like typecasting at runtime with rtti which stands for a runtime type identification or runtime polymorphism you can find on the internet also we can simply check that related casting operation is correct or not so to see the effect to see the example to just start and then let's create an animal class right now it is empty we are here just to see rtti example so i will not implement anything in this class so after let's create a stray cat class which is inherited by animal class which means stray cat object can use the features of the base class of the animal class this is inheritance right and simply we can say that stray cat is a animal animal then i will write here a speak function which has an argument animal pointer that means any of the object which is inherited by the animal object animal class can pass this function as an argument inside this function animal pointer will be cast to stray cat pointer explicitly this is downcasting that we have to be more careful about it so this is not the best practice that is why i am doing right now and i just want to show you an example okay just an explicitly casting and after i call the meow method from the stray cat so i just remove the space and now let's use this function create a stray cat pointer with a new keyword as you see that uh, i just pass this cat pointer the speak function then let's compile see if it's in rtti and run it again the example as you see meow is printed right this is expected right this is okay now let's pass the animal pointer to speak function then see what happened let's compile again and run it as you see the animal just say meow this is this is wrong right in animal class there are a lot of different kind of um, animals right just only cats can meow right this this is the problem and even if you have an, another class like a lion which is inherited from an animal class like a stray cat right let's create first then it's empty class like an animal let's create a pointer from them and a pass the spec function right see we will see the same result like an animal as you see that we made a lion speak like a cat this will is the nature this is this is wrong right so the implementation is wrong here there is a problem in the typecasting in the speak function this is the point where dynamic cast comes to play when you try casting with dynamic cast not with an explicitly you will have an ability to check Typecasting is correct or not during runtime. This is important, not a compile time. In speak function, let's uh, change explicit casting to dynamic cast and see the result. So when casting is not correct, this will return a null pointer. Okay, cat pointer is returned a null when the casting is not correct. So then, if it is null, we should not call the related method. That is the point. I just put down here below line now let's compile yeah let's see that problem let me fix this i'm writing here more one more c out here yeah it's okay so but now as you see that when we use dynamic cast it says that type is not polymorphic to make the polymorphic we have to at least add one virtual method to our base class that is why i will add right now a dummy empty virtual method here as you see that right now related instance uh, just typo here 
let me correct it to see the better as you see that yeah related instance has no meow right this is good so if you pass for example um, let's write for each each function for them let's pass Let's run the example again. So as you see, for animal pointer, related instance has no meow. For stray cat pointer is meow, it is okay. For lion pointer, related instance has no meow. Yeah, this is good. Lion is happy right now. For hierarchy, we need a we table here. We used to be tables, virtual tables. We create the virtual method, right? So we can see all virtual table with the command in the compiler with fdump class hierarchy if you compile like this it will print rtti cpp 002 class something like and if you get this there are a bunch of lines of information you can find a lot of things so that is why it's a good idea to directly grab the um, desired line after 10 lines for example with table for and stray cat i'm looking for and as you see that with table is here right now and in the related functions related informations pointer addresses you can find everything there so this is also the way to check the with table you can find a lot of more information about the whole communication whole uh, relation between the objects here this is the point when you use the rtti brings more things we also should care about actually for instance if you do not disable the rti with compiler option application binary size will be more if you disable it you can save more space if you are using a low embedded systems where bytes are important right as you see right now uh, rtti binary is not uh, actually RTI is not disabled here and is uh, the size around and 14 kilobytes right so let's disable uh, the RTTI then see the difference on the size to disable it I will remove the virtual method here and in the speak function I will remove dynamic cast otherwise it will not compile because we will we pass the option to the, our compiler to disable the RTTI so simply F no RTTI then compile again and just check the size and see now is nine kilobytes this is totally different right sizes around and the difference is about around half right this is this is important where uh, the memory is a problem like an embedded systems so that is why we can say that here rtti violates zero overhead principle for c what is the zero overhead principle which means zero overhead principle what you don't use you don't pay right but this is there is a memory for this as you see if you don't use but there is still memory that violates the runtime type identification violates the uh, zero overhead principle in c++ this is the problem there is also a q object cast which is like use a dynamic cast but this q object cast is used in the Qt and Qt as you know uh, enhance the c++ features c++ abilities as you know that notation is same like a q object cast but there is a one advantage the q object cast or a um, dynamic cast q object cast behaves similarly to standard c++ dynamic cast but it does not require runtime type identification support so it use memory more and more efficient right but uh, to use this uh, you have to decorate q object in your class in the Qt so if you use a Qt environment that's a bit disadvantage over C++ but if you use Qt Q object cast you can do whatever you want like uh, casting 
C++ instance to the QMS site also. This is important. So I just recommend you to check also this uh, QMS cast. That is all. So guys, uh, that is all for me here for this content. Um, see you again. Do not forget to subscribe. Bye.